living stereo. It's the most tremendous new musical experience you can have. Hey, I'm all ready to do another painting. This one I started a little while ago. Come on in over to the studio with me. Somebody got a teapot on or something? What's that sound? Oh well. Strange sounds that are down here all the time. I don't know. Oh, hey, come on in here. Come on in here. I want to show you something on the computer. Phase one. You just saw me bring this painting in. This painting I got started probably a couple of months ago and I couldn't figure out what I wanted for a background on it until just recently, like a couple of nights ago. Just right before I fell asleep I had this idea. And it even kept me up for a while and I had to put this video together to show you what I did so far. So come on in, I'm going to show you this right now. Well, I sure hope you like that. And here's, here's the painting. What you saw on the video, you saw what I thought I would put in here. I'm, I'm, it's an interesting story. When my wife and I had our honeymoon, we went to the Kiwano Peninsula. And me being an old hippie and knowing how to sleep outdoors and in the car, I had this Volkswagen with a backward seat, the passenger seat faced backwards. So you could actually sleep in there with no problem for one person. So on our honeymoon, we went to the, the area that I knew the best up there in the Keweenaw, and that was around the Copper Harbor area. And guess what? Our first night of our honeymoon, we spent in the back seat of a Volkswagen Beetle. Yep, and I just thought that was the coolest thing. And I never heard anything from my wife about it until a couple days later, well, actually one day later, she says, I love you, but we're never going to do that again. You are going to have to get a cabin or a hotel room for us tonight. That was the next day she said that. Well, to make a long story short, as we were driving around the Keweenaw, we came upon this bluff or this cliff, and we looked down, and there was this little island out there. It was kind of like a bay scene, where well, you saw it in the video. And it was just sitting out there with beautiful little trees. So a couple of nights ago, I thought, yeah, that would be the perfect thing for this painting. So you, you see, the, this is the horizon line back in here. So my thoughts are, is to put that little island across this and so that you'll actually see it through the windows of the car and then possibly coming out a little bit here and a little bit over there. So that's what I'm going to do now. So come on along. Let's. Paint an island. Phase two.
Well, I've got this all sketched out. Now what I'm going to do next is going to get that big old masking tape again. And I'm going to tape over this masking. And I'm going to just cut out this area here that's going to be the island. And I'll show you what I'll do after that. Because I don't know right now. <laughs> A lot of people have been asking about this tape. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll put it right here. So that's the address on Amazon. That's what you're going to be looking for because it comes from Amazon. Now when I'm cutting this, I'm just kind of doing a rough cut on it. It's not like I'm cutting every every little leaf and stuff. I'm just doing a rough cut on it. Because later on, all the all the um, leaves and everything on the trees, or the needles, I should say, because they're pine trees, will be painted in with a brush. We can see some of this stuff here is not it's just not getting cut through because I'm really lightly working on this. Because of the board that I have here, it's not usually it's not the masonite that I usually paint on. It's sort of a well it's a sign painter's board that they use that's really, really light. And it's like almost like a bump work. It's got a hard surface though. But there's foam in between it, and the back side is a real hard surface, a big, a plastic, plastic surface. But it's still easy to cut through, so that's why I'm kind of careful of, about cutting deep, so. So this area right here, this is going to be the beach area. This is the reflection of the trees above. I'm going to try to get this without getting in there and cutting out this other area. This is going to be hard. This is the beach area right here. I can always paint this with a brush later on, so I'm not too concerned if I get it right the first time. I do have to make sure that this tape that's underneath here is still there, right? Phase three. Well, that's that. I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit and I'll be right back. Whether I'm going to sponge it or use a brush, I haven't really decided yet, but I'm going to let this dry. Well, what I'm going to be doing today, now that I've airbrushed this base green in and I've gave it some time to dry, now I'm going to start using some sponges. So you can get these sponges at a hobby store or a hardware store and you just break them apart into little tiny pieces like this. Or the best thing you could do is to go to Martha Stewart and get one of these. And then break that up, tear it up a little bit. I don't know what they use these for in the hobby world, but I, I like using these for getting in and doing some detail work. And so you just take a little bit of that. Now, 
you also can listen to all these big time artists, you know, like Bob Ross and Alexander and all these guys, and they got these great big gigantic palettes, you know, that you put on your arm and you walk around like, you know, like you're a big time old time artist, you know. Or you can just go to the store and get yourself a rotisserie chicken and after you're done with the rotisserie chicken you just wash out the container and use that for your palette. You can use this for like if you're doing sponge painting or pour paintings or whatever. And this is what I'm what's what I use usually when I do some sponge work. So I'm taking Martha Stewart, I'm gonna dip it in some of this white and green and bounce it around a little bit until I find the right color. Also have some yellow ochre and some phthalo green here. Take a little bit of that. And there, if I can do this, and there, look at that, look at a pretty color. That's pretty green right there. So, and, you know, if you put a little bit of, of the, the phthalo green on one side, and a little bit of the yellow ochre plus the green and the white that you have down in here on the other so you got like a trinity of, of greens right now see so you can use that and that's what I'm planning on doing just want to get a little bit of that paint off of there So that's all that's to it. See, it's a waste of paint, but might be able to use this. I'd probably start another painting and use this, so I'm not wasting any paint. So that's basically all you have to do with a sponge, and I would suggest probably pulling off the masking now. You could go in there with an airbrush and, and, and work on with a, a, a real fine airbrush. Maybe I'll do that. Or you can go in there with a brush and then you can start bringing out the details of the trees. But remember, this is probably three quarters of a mile away, a half a mile, three quarters of a mile away out into the lake. So you're not going to see a lot of detail, but you will see the formation of trees. And that's where the darker colors will come in handy. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit more. I'll be right back and then I'll decide what I'm going to do. Am I going to use an airbrush or am I going to use a brush? been many a year now.
Thank you. I hope you're not annoyed. I think I'm finished. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Now I'm done. See you on the next painting. I hope you enjoyed this one.